It's the Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Welcome back to Mutual Presents. I'm Jack Ward, and it's season three. With MadCon 2021 behind us, we're back with a look at the Mutual YouTube, where every day we release classics from the Mutual Broadcasting System, our spiritual forefather. This week, it's our second look at the adventures of Maisie with Acme Surplus Truck Driver and Boyfriend Eddie. Wind back the clocks as we go there now. Hiya, babe. Say hi, my little... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep. I'm like the man said, Maisie Revere from Brooklyn. By profession, I'm a chanteuse. That's French for singer, you know. Right now, I'm between engagements. That's an expression in show business that means if something don't happen real soon, I'll starve to death. Well, this morning, I was making the rounds of agents' offices, and I got a couple of offers. One of them was even for a job. <laughs> And then I chanced on a big war surplus company with a sign out, Help Wanted. And inasmuch as a job is a job, I opened the door. And I walked up to the man at the personnel window. <laughs> I had to eat. And I wasn't one of them choosy chantoosies. Yes, miss, what can I do for you? I'll take it. You take what? The job. How much does it pay? Oh, you mean our sign on the window? Yeah. Of course, I really don't expect it to be in my line. I'm a singer, you know. Well, I'm sorry, miss. We're not putting on any singers this week. But we are short of help. What kind of other work do you think you can do? Yes. I mean, what do you have experience at? Oh, well, what's open? Well, we can use a typist, comptometrist, sonographer, bookkeeper, billing clerk, lithograph operator. Well? Keep going. I'll tell you when you come to it. Am I getting warm? <laughs> not even close yet. But there must be something. Look, miss, all we take care of here is war surplus. Oh, then I... you ought to take care of me. I'm war surplus. You are? Yeah. I used to be a whack. Well, I'm sorry, Sergeant, but I'm afraid there's really nothing that we can... Gee, I, I drove an ambulance and trucks. Say, maybe you can use a truck driver. A, a truck driver? But you're a woman. Yeah, but women have stomachs, too. Or haven't you been down to the beach lately? But, and but, during the war, I drove trucks all over Europe and Africa. During bombardments, too. But, miss, this isn't Africa. This is Los Angeles. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to danger. I'm sorry, but it's impossible. Women truck drivers, it just isn't being done. Yeah, sure. Of course, during the war, women drove taxis, ambulances, trucks. But now that it's all over, you're right. It can't be done. Well, so long, chum. Sorry I took up your time. Ouch. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, gee, why don't you look where you're going? Oh, I'm very sorry, miss. Here, here let me help you up. Thanks. Oh, gee. I'm, oh, look, your elbow, it's all scraped. Oh, well, that's uh, all right. I got too much skin anyway. Oh, gosh, maybe you're killed. I mean, hurt. I, I mean, maybe you better sit down. Well, now, maybe. calm down, uh, fella. Uh, you're all excited. Oh, oh, I, I, I can't help it. You, you see, I'm going to have a baby. 
You are? <laughs> well, then maybe you'd better sit down. Oh, thanks. Oh, I mean, <laughs> my wife's going to have a baby. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it could be tonight. The baby, I mean. You know how it is. Well, no, I'm single. Oh, well, that's why I've got to be there. I, to take her to the hospital. My wife. It's my first, you know. Your first wife? No, baby. Oh. <laughs> it costs a lot of money, and I can't afford to lose it. The baby? No, my job. Oh. I drive a truck, you know. Didn't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. For this company, I work nights. Mm hmm that's when they're always delivered, aren't they? Truck? No, babies. Oh, I should have known. Yeah, gosh, I, I, I shouldn't tonight. I shouldn't because I got a feeling that it's going to happen. But the money, I'm afraid to tell them, but I, I must. Mustn't I? Huh? Don't you think? Well, uh, l look, you'd better start from the beginning. I, huh? I think maybe I missed something. You, 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 oh, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm Charlie Pilsudski. How do you do? I'm Maisie Revere. Oh, how do you do? Well, not very well. I try to get a job here driving a truck. You, you, oh, you drive a truck, but you're a woman. I know it and you know it, but does the truck? Look, I drove practically everything on wheels all over Europe. Y Gosh. Say, maybe... Yeah? No, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Hey, but on the other hand... Yeah, on the other hand. It won't work. No, it won't work. No. But I just gotta take the chance... Maisie, will you do it? Sure. <clears throat> do what? Take over tonight's run to Frisco. Oh, the dough ain't much. Well, my stomach don't hold much. Oh, it'll be a big favor, Maisie. I begged off two runs this week already, and if, if I tell the boss I can't make it tonight again because my wife's time is getting too close and I ought to be with her just in case... They'd fire you, huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and jobs ain't easy to get. So I've heard. Okay, Charlie, I'll get your truck to Frisco. You'll still have your job. Your wife can have the baby, and... Oh. Uh-uh. Oh, you're not backing out, are you, Maisie? No, but how am I going to get the truck past the checker tonight? He'll notice I'm a woman. I got it. I'll wear a sweater. A, a sweater? Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Hey, oh, don't you worry about that, Maisie. You, you just be at the loading platform at 11.30 tonight, But huh? the checker... Oh, Bill Hendricks is a friend of mine. He'll keep his eyes and mouth closed. I'll have the truck all loaded and ready for you to take off in a hurry. Good. I'll be there on time, Charlie. Oh, good. And I'll get that truck to Frisco for you right on time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, only one thing. Yeah? You're a woman, and if a cop should stop you driving a truck without a license, how will you get out of it? <laughs> Don't you worry about that, Charlie. Like you say, I'm a woman. <laughs> It is easy loading that loot on the truck, Lefty, and keep it quiet. What you so jumpy about, oh. Pete? I took care we won't be this time. Come on, come on. Let's get the rest of this stuff in the truck. I promised Shirley I'd be back in time to give her another lesson on picking locks. <laughs> She's ambitious, that girl of mine. My model's the same. Yeah. Wants me to let her do one of these warehouse jobs, but I keep telling her the boss won't go for it. Yeah, my Shirley's the same about that. But I keep telling her to stay home, read her comic books. You know, improve her mind. Yeah, education's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Hey, come on, I'll stop mourning about your girl. Let's get this load loaded. Now keep your shade on, will you? We ain't do it to rent this bus until 1230. Yeah, but it's 20 miles to the Turnpike Road in black. You don't like to be kept waiting. Gaze impatient. There ain't gonna be much room for any more stuff in here. Charlie loaded it pretty full. Do to Charlie? Who's Charlie? Charlie Pilsudski, the guy with drives this here load. Oh, yeah. I seen his name on a license when I checked the gas hey, gauge. Hey. Doc Lefty. What's up? Quick, under the truck. Heard me. A cop. Where? Out there on the street corner. Under the light. Quick, quick. Under here. Uh, I kind of thought this was working out too good to last. Now he ain't going to be able to meet Blackie on schedule. Shh, 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 shh. Quiet. Quiet. We'll have to leave. And where do you think you're going, miss? Oh, uh, oh, good evening, officer. I it's a nice night, ain't it? Answer the question, miss. Oh, sure. It is a nice night. I, I mean, where are you going? Oh, well, I, um, uh, I have to wait for my boyfriend in that truck. He, um, uh, he, uh... Yes? He, uh, he... <laughs> and what's so funny? He, 
Yeah, well, it, it, um, he ain't there yet. You see, he's driving all the way to Frisco, and I'm bringing him a change of clothes. It's in that suitcase? Yeah. He's a very snappy dresser, you know. He must be. There's a bit of lace sticking out of there. Oh, well, um, that's mine. You see, I'm going with him. We're uh, getting married. Uh, so long, officer. Well, it ain't safe for a girl to be waiting around in a dark alley all by herself. I'll just keep you company till he gets here. Oh, well, that won't be necessary, officer. I'll, I'll drive by his house and pick him up. Oh, oh, you drive a truck. Why is everybody so amazed? Well, do you have a license? Well, sure I have, officer. You can't get married without one. I mean, do you have a license to drive a truck? No, but, gosh, Charlie and me, we just got to get married. You see, um, I'm running away from home. I'm sorry, and... miss, but you got to have a license to drive a truck. We still have laws in this city. Uh, well, you see, my father don't want me to marry him because he's an Irishman. Oh, I see. And what's wrong with Irishmen? Nothing, but my father... Well, come along, young lady. I'm going to see that you get in that truck and pick up your fella. Yeah, your old man sure has a nerve trying to prevent you from finding true happiness with the son of old Aaron. Oh, thank you, officer. Yes, come along now. Can't keep the groom waiting. Oh, you lucky girl. He's coming up to the truck. Yeah. And he's got a thing with him. Yep. You just put that in the rug. They're getting too close for comfort. I got it. Quiet, quiet. And keep down under here. Yep, but she's getting in a truck. I suppose she drives it off. We'll be caught here oh, without... She, 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 you dope. Whoever heard of a dame driving a truck, you stupid. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, for a minute there, I was worried. Well, goodbye, officer, and thanks. Oh, forget it, miss. Just save me a piece of the wedding cake. I will, officer. Just as soon as we're Mr. and Mrs. Charles Pilsudski. Sure. Pilsudski? I thought you said your boyfriend was Irish. Oh, did I say Pilsudski? I meant old Pilsudski. Old Pilsudski? But that's he's an Irish. Goodbye, officer. Come back here. Come back here. Petey, don't look now. But some dames can drive trucks. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we gotta run for Get you. your hands up. Get them up there. Now, wait a minute, officer. You're making a mistake, officer. If I am, I'll hate myself in the morning. Well, 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 look who it is. It's Lefty and Pity Boy. Are you still specializing in robbing warehouses, sir? Eh? Look, officer, we didn't do nothing. Well, don't worry me, boys. From now on, you'll be doing plenty. About ten years. And so a little Goldilocks. Goldilocks? The cute little trick that's working with you. Yes, she won't get very far with that stolen truck. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Enchanted evening, I'll say. Hi, fella. Looking for a lift? I sure am, mister. Hey, you're a girl. Oh, and a pretty wet girl at that. Yeah. When the Chamber of Commerce had come to California and soak up the sunshine, they weren't kidding. Hop in. Don't mind if I do. Whew. There. Oh, it sure feels good to sit down again. My feet sure thank you for this, Mac. <laughs> Don't let the mustache fool you, honey. It's just grease. The name's Maisie. Maisie Revere. Oh, I'm Helen O'Rourke. O'Rourke? <laughs> so you're Irish. <laughs> well, what's so funny about being Irish? <laughs> well, don't get your shillelagh in an uproar, honey. I was just thinking of a fastie I pulled on a cop. A cop? <laughs> yeah, well, forget it, honey. 
You walking back from a little session of Come on, baby, be reasonable? <laughs> no. I'm hitchhiking to Portland for a job. At 11.30 at night in the rain? Well, it isn't easy to make an honest dollar, you know. Yeah, I've heard the rumor. Frisco's where I'm unloading this heat. I can take you that far. Oh, thanks. I'm supposed to start work since I get to Portland. Oh. Well, what at, honey? Waitress or stuff like that there? No. <laughs> You are now looking at Helen O'Rourke, girl lumberjack. Lumberjack? But that ain't woman's work. Well, uh, driving a truck isn't exactly feminine. <clears throat> Touche, honey. I'm just chauffeuring this dinosaur on wheels because a buck is a buck, like the saying goes. Well, I know there can't be a fortune in driving a truck. That all depends on what you consider a fortune, honey. Well, let's have some radio. We interrupt this program to bring you a late news flash. Attention, local police. Be on the lookout for a 10-ton truck believed to be headed north on the San Francisco coast route. See, we're on the coast route, Maisie, aren't we? Yeah, but I ain't stopping to look for no trucks. When you've seen one, you've seen them all. The truck, loaded with Army surplus material, was stolen earlier this evening from the warehouse of the Acme War Surplus Company. Hey, Maisie, isn't this an Acme truck? Yeah, one of them. But Acme's a big outfit. What's losing one truck to them? The driver of the stolen truck may be armed, so proceed with caution. She is reputed to be a member of the notorious Blackie Leonard gang. She? Well, who ever heard of a woman truck driver? She? She is described as being about five feet two. <gasps> oh, don't look at me like that, honey. I'm only five one and three quarters. She's a glamorous blonde. Maybe you Oh, that's silly. Who can be glamorous wearing faded blue overalls? When last seen, she was wearing faded blue overalls. Oh, well, how could that cop tell? It was so dark. Cop? Oh, let me out of but here, But, honey, please. I, I, I want... All motorists are requested to report to the police immediately if you've seen the stolen truck and this desperate gun mall. Oh, oh gee, please don't give me 20 years in jail. That is all. That's enough. Oh, dear. What are you stopping here for? You're not going to ki- shoot me. Oh, of course not, Helen, honey. I'm no murderer. I'm no nothing. Let's get away from this heat. All I ask is that you stick by me to the end. Oh. Look. A man just pulled up in front of us. He's getting out. Oh, he has a gun in his hand. And this is the end. Good work, baby. You got that rendezvous here right on schedule. Rendezvous? Oh. <laughs> oh, the tough part's all over. You don't have to be nervous no more, Shirley. Shirley? There this is Lefty's Goyle Shirley, ain't it, Moidel? Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> uh, pipe down, Shirley. You don't want Pete to think his Goyle has gone chicken. Pete's Goyle? I thought you was Lefty's Goyle. Oh, yeah, well, we keep changing fellas back and forth, don't we, Shirley? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we like variety. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, then maybe we could be more than just uh, associates in our warehouse robbing enterprises. You know, there ain't nobody that's got a better appreciation of feminine putritude than Blackie Leonard. Blackie Leonard? Oh, no. Sure, sure. Say, you used to a Pete and left these mouths, ain't you? Oh, certainly. I mean, certainly. Might have just screamed like that because, <laughs> well, you know how them bobby stockers scream for Sinatra. <laughs> you sort of ghost for me, huh? Yeah, Blackie. But I saw your voice. But... But... You hide me, Moidle. Blackie's mine, and if I catch you peeping my time with him, I'll shoot you so full of holes you look like a new Buick. Now, ladies, ladies, don't fight over me, please. Till later. You know, we got to get destructed a hideout before the cops spot it. And then, uh, baby, when we settle down nice and cozy like you and me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, but I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but the Pete and Lefty... Oh, uh, you don't have to worry about them goons. For about ten years, the cops picked them up at a warehouse. Oh, but but how did you... Know how they got caught? Yeah. Oh, I got connections at headquarters. Well, no, she meant about her, uh, the truck, didn't you, Moidle? You're Moidle, I'm surely. What was that? Uh, <laughs> I said, I'm surely glad we got away with the truck after the boys was nabbed. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be back in a sec, doll. I gotta tell the boys to follow us down. Oh, what do we do now, Shirley? Uh, Maisie, or whatever your name is. Well, you just gotta trust me, Moidel. I mean, Helen. And play along till I can think of a way out of this mess. But how are we gonna get out? I don't know. I've never been in a horrible spot like this. I'm counting on one thing to get us out. What's that? Beginner's luck. Shh. Here he comes now. Okay, chicks, we're all set. Uh, move over, babe. 
<laughs> okay, you can get going now. Uh, get going? Yeah, it's got a hideout. The boys will follow us. The hideout? Hideout. Well, Lefty told you where it is, of course. Yeah, sure. He told us, but... but uh... Ah, now I know. Uh, you do? Yeah. After the long haul, you're tired, huh? Oh, yeah, tired. Yeah, yeah. tired. Okay, shove over. I'll take a wheel. Sure. There. I'm really exhausted. Yeah, sure, I know. It's a long haul to the hideout. You know, I'll bet when you get there, you'll <laughs> be almost dead. Well, as long as it's just almost, mister. As long as it's just almost. <laughs> This is it, Shoyle. Yeah, I heard a lot about it, Blackie. So this here's your little gray bulletproof home in the West. Uh, this joint does need a woman's touch, Blackie. The uh, wall decorations sort of clash, don't they, Shoyle? Yeah. It's a little out of date, too. They ain't using machine guns and rifles in French Provincial anymore. Yeah, gives the joint sort of cold look. Mm. Very cold. And I, and I don't think much of the painter what did the decor here. He slapped some brown paint in the wallpaper. Oh, that ain't brown paint, babe. That's just dried blood. <clears throat> blood? blood? Well, while the boys are unloading the truck, how's about you two fellows going into the kitchen and cooking up some grub, huh? Cooking? But but I can't... Oh, uh... <laughs> now, don't give me that, babe. Lefty tells me you make hot cakes just like his mother used to make. Yeah, but you don't know what a lousy cook his mother was. Yeah, you'll find all the stuff you need in the kitchen. Of course, there ain't much room to move around. I've got a couple of them uh, Navy wireless sets in there. In the kitchen? Didn't have enough room in the garage for all the swag we swiped. Wireless sets, huh? Come on, Moita, let's scrub up some grub. Maisie, you got a gleam in your eye. What's cooking in here besides food? A way out. Here, help me unwind the wire this wireless set. But we can't send messages on that. It's not connected. Well, if I work fast, it will be. You just keep an eye on the door and keep your fingers crossed. Here's where little Maisie's training in whack communications pays off. Gee, were you a whack? Yeah. And if I can't get this thing working real fast, I have a sneaking suspicion that both our children will grow up to be orphans. <laughs> Gosh, Maisie, what if this doesn't work? What if nobody hears our SOS? Oh, please, Helen, don't talk. Just worry. If, if Blackie ever decides to come in here to see how, how our cooking is coming along, we'll be part of the wallpaper, too. Hey, in there. How about the grub? It, it, it won't be long now, Blackie. Yeah, we're, we're flapping them flapjacks. You mean they ain't ready to eat yet? They ain't come down from the ceiling yet. <laughs> well, hurry up, will you? Some stuff. Sure, sure. Oh, dear. You contacted anybody yet, Maisie? Huh? Please? Well, I can't tell that, honey. All I can do on this thing is stand. I can't receive. How's about it, Chef? Oh, just a couple of minutes more. We're, we're also fixing some soup. Yeah, but you've been at it a half hour already. I know, but this is turtle soup, and you know how slow turtles are. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you just five minutes more, see? Just five minutes. Oh, gosh. Oh, hello, Jake. You and the boys finish unloading the truck yet? Yeah, boss, we... Hey, where's the skate? In the kitchen, Jake. Hey, uh, guess what they're cooking? A goose. A goose? Your goose. Here, read this. Uh, what is this, anyway? A little message I picked up whilst checking one of them wireless receiving sets we swiped from the warehouse. It's sort of interesting. Hell, let me see that. Uh, kind of thought things was unkosher. You and the boys got the trucks loaded, Jake. We'll be pulling out of here as soon as I take care of some unfinished business. Check, Chief. Yeah. Here I come, ladies. Ready or not. No, no, don't, Blackie. We're coming out with the grub. Yeah, we're all finished. You sure are, ladies. You sure are. Here's the flapjacks, Blackie. 
The soup should be ready soon. I'll, I'll go back in the kitchen and wash it. Well, I'll go with you, Shoya. I just love watching soup. No, 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 no. Please, lady, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I don't like to eat alone. Uh, but, uh, I'm not hungry. Uh, and I'm on a diet. Sit down. Uh, Maisie, got a gum. A gum. Blackie don't like little girls sending messages for help on the wireless. A gun. Oh, he knows about. She, she fainted. <laughs> Imagine her being scared. <laughs> yeah. Now, why would you like it, babe? And the head or the back? Uh, in the back, I think. I just got a new permanent. Okay, chick. Anything you'd like to say before I let you have it? Yeah. Blackie, can I say just one word? Sure, go ahead. Help! Okay, Blackie, drop it. What? The cops! Huh? Looks like we got here sort of in the nick of time, miss. One second later, you would have been a dead cookie. Yeah. Oh! Uh, nothing to worry about now, miss. We got all the others. Oh, I didn't scream because of that. No? No, my soup. It's burning. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, that little caper is over with, and I'm still alive and kicking. And Blackie and the mob, they found out you can't sell government property and get away with it. That is, of course, unless you belong to the government. Yes, sir, the only thing that pays less than crime is television. Well, here I am in San Francisco with 18 cents in my kit. Won't get that dough from Charlie Tilsudski till I get back to Los Angeles. Am I hungry? Guess I'll look around for a nice, clean restaurant and blow the bank roll. Am I worried about tomorrow? Not little baby. The way I figure, worry is like rocking in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it don't get you no prayer. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of East Side, West Side, starring Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, Van Heflin, and Ava Gardner. (laughs) Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Bill Conrad, Sidney Miller, Mary Jane Croft, Harry Bartell, Herb Vigran, Ed Max, and Howard McNear. Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say how about a little... Ow! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, you're announced.
And now here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. For a time once, I thought it'd be changed to Mrs. Eddie Jordan. But I didn't marry Mr. Eddie Jordan because he had an impediment in his speech. He couldn't say words like, Maisie, will you be my wife? Well, so here's little bachelor Maisie. Instead of an ivy-covered honeymoon cottage in the pitter-patter of tiny feet, I am in a tiny fourth-floor boarding house room. And the only pitter-patter I hear is the rain dripping in through a leak in the ceiling. Oh, just a minute, Mrs. Kennedy. Just a minute. Ouch. It ain't the landlady, Maisie. It's me, Merton. Oh, hello, Merton. Hi. What's the matter? Oh, I just burnt my finger. Every time I try to hide my percolator in a hurry, I always grab it where it perks instead of where it laters. Oh, gosh. Well, you got to watch that cooking in your room, Maisie. You know Mrs. Kennedy's nose. Yeah. You'd think I'd be more careful, wouldn't you? Yeah. After all, I've been sniffed out of boarding house rooms from Maine to California. Well, how's about joining me for a cup of coffee, Mert, before you run off to the salt mines? Uh, oh, oh well, gee, Maisie, uh, thanks, but I just have time to get down to the store under the wire. I just knocked to let you know it's okay now. Oh, thank you, Mert. But there's really no hurry. I'm only taking a cold shower this morning. Oh, how can you take cold showers on mornings like this? Well, gee, no choice. By the time I get to our community bathroom, our fellow boarders have taken all the hot water. Oh, well... You can take a hot one today, Maisie. I, uh, I saved my water for you. Oh, that's real sweet of you, Mert. Uh, say, Maisie. Yeah? They're having a dance at the Y Saturday night, and I... Mm-hmm. Well, all the fellas are bringing girls. And... Well, girls are nicer to dance with than fellas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I thought if, if you didn't have nothing particular doing... Merton Falsgruber. Are you inviting me to make with the feet with you? Well, gosh, Maisie, I, I know you being in show business, you meet, well, rich guys who are more exciting to dance with. Exciting? Don't you believe it, Sonny? I've had all I want of them retreaded old playboys. Oh, g- gosh, then you mean you'd rather, I mean, somebody like me? Why, sure, Mert. At least with you, I know when you say let's go out on the balcony for a breath of fresh air that you're really interested in breathing. Yes, I am. <laughs> Gosh, thanks, Maisie. Uh, then it's a date? Sure. My act closes at the theater Friday, so I'll be in the Miss clear. Miss Revere! Oh. Miss Revere! Oh, Mrs. Kennedy wants you, Maisie. Oh. I wonder what Miss Dry Rod of 1916 wants. There's a gentleman to see you downstairs, Miss Revere, and Mr. Eddie Jordan. Eddie Jordan? Eddie? Whoa! Maisie, what? I'm coming right down, Mrs. Kennedy. <laughs> in here, Miss Revere. Eddie. Maisie. Gosh, it's really you. Yeah, it's me. Gee. Gosh. Now, that's what I call a hunk of scintillating conversation. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, we'd like to be... Uh, well, if you yeah, you mind. know how it is. <laughs> Maisie, at my age, I just know how it was. <laughs> Gee. Eddie, I'm so happy I could cry. This isn't the time for anything but this. Oh, Eddie, you sure know how. Now that I've found you again, honey, I'm never going to let you go again. (sighs) Maisie, why did you ever run out on me? Back in Scottsville, we were so, so... That's why I ran out. We were so-so. Look, I would have asked you to marry me a long time ago, honey, back in Scottsville, but, well, you know what I was making selling insurance. Well, Eddie, I could have lived on your salary. I know you could have, but what would I have lived on? I left Scottsville because there was no future there selling insurance. And I left because there was no future there with you. Eddie, honey. Yeah? How did you ever wind up in this town? Oh, I just roamed around the country, looking for you mostly. I happened to stop off here, and luckily I found a job. Oh, doing what, Ed? Insurance. Oh, gee, that's grand. Salary isn't much. Mm. But it's nice, clean work, just enough money for a single man. Oh, we won't be in this financial rut forever, honey. After all, I've still got my engineer's diploma from college. Well, that's nice. In case things get real tough, you can always sell the frame. Someday, honey, I'll get a break. Someday, Dame Chance will smile at me. And you'll smile back just like you do at all dames. Maisie, honey, stop it. You're the only girl for me. You always will be. Oh, I'm sure you mean it, Eddie. You've forgotten all about that arch rival of mine back in Scottsdale. Hmm. Funny, I can't remember her name. You mean Marsha Brent? Yeah. Yeah. Funny how her name came back to you, just like that. Silly kid, that Marcia. But cute, didn't you think? Mm-hmm. You didn't think. 
Poor little Marcia. She sure tried hard to get me a job with the Romance Engineering Company. She sure stuck her neck out. Well, if he ever sticks it out again, I'll slap it right back in. Oh, why, Maisie, I do believe you're jealous. Me? Jealous? Yeah. <laughs> you're darn tootin' I am. Eddie Jackson, if I ever catch you even looking at another woman, I'll... Kill me? Yeah. The hard way. Like this. Ah, oh, beautiful way of going, honey. A beautiful way. Oh, and talking about going, i got to get back on the job. Uh, suppose I meet you downtown at noon, honey, and then I'll take you out to lunch, just like always. Okay, Eddie, dear. But I know you'll be tired after all that work, so I insist on carrying my own tray. Well, I think your Mr. Jordan should be comfortable in this room, Maisie. Of course, it isn't as close to the bath as your room. Oh, I don't think Eddie would mind running up two flights, Mrs. Kennedy. He was very athletic in college. Uh... Of course, he does understand about cooking in the room. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you and your fiancé ever feel that you don't care to go out to eat, well... Uh, yes? Uh, I could fix a pretty good dinner for you. Why, Mrs. K, I always thought... That, that I'm a dried-up old prune, a hatchet-faced old woman with ice in her veins. Oh, I don't think that at all, Mrs. Kennedy. Well, you should, because I am. No, you're not really, honey. Honey. <laughs> I haven't been called that in 30 years. Man trouble? Uh-huh. May not show, Maisie, but love has kicked me in the face. Oh, it shows, Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it has? Mm. Mr. Kennedy isn't dead. He he ran away. Oh, I'm sorry. If there's anything I can do... Well, there is, Maisie. Don't make the same mistake I did. Honey, I'm a little older than you. Huh? A uh, whole lot older than you. Yeah, that's better. And I found out a little too late, unfortunately, that men are just boys grown up. Oh, I don't think my Eddie's grown up yet. He gets a kick out of the strangest things. Yeah. Well, what I mean is kids like to have everything they do appreciated. They like to be flattered, patted on the back. Arnold, mm -hmm. uh, that's my husband, he used to make airplanes out of newspaper and sail them through the living room. <laughs> oh, that's really silly. Yeah. It's a lot sillier going through life alone. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, I gotta meet Eddie for lunch. And I'll show interest in everything he does, Mrs. K. I'll interest him to death if that's what it takes to keep a man happy. Oh, smart girl, Maisie. It keeps men happy and also keeps their minds off other women. It does. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not saying your Mr. Jordan is the type. <laughs> After all, there are all kinds of men. Not when it comes to women, there ain't. <laughs> Maisie, honey, I can't remember when I've enjoyed lunch more. Wow, look at the time. i got to get back to the office. Oh, Eddie, not yet, please. Let's just sit here and talk. Uh, but, Maisie... Darling, I... what did you do this morning? Uh, you mean first thing? Yeah, right after you opened your eyes. Well, I got up. Oh, how thrilling. Thrilling? Yeah. Then what did you do? I washed. <gasps> you didn't. Of course, I always wash in the morning. Always? Certainly. Eddie, you're absolutely wonderful. Wonderful for washing when I get up? Well, yes. It's those little things that make a woman's heart thrill. Uh, look, Maisie, i got to rush back. Gee, Eddie, let's not stop this wonderful discussion. Uh, look, Maisie, I, I don't have time. I'm already late and my boss Oh, just, be... just a few more questions. I'm so interested in the interesting life you lead. Now, who works in the office with you? Oh, just a few fellas. Fellas? Uh -huh. Oh. How wonderful. Uh, Maisie, the boss, Mr. Evans, said if I'm ever the least now bit late again, me. he was going to... Now, wait a minute. He's... Who else is in your office? Look, the boss, Mr. Evans... Naturally. Is... Does he have a secretary? Yes, she's very nice. Oh, wonderful. She's about 60, I guess. Oh, wonderful. Maisie, the boss says... That <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess he don't say smart things like you say. Afternoon, Jordan. Mr. Evans. You're late again, Jordan. You're fired. Goodbye, Jordan. Good... Goodbye, Mr. Evans. Oh, Ed. You mean that was... You're, uh, yeah. I. Uh, now you can ask me all the wonderful questions you want. I've got plenty of time to answer them. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment.
Maisie. Come in. I just thought you might need some extra towels, Mr. Jo... Maisie, you know the house rules about... You know? And this is Mr. Jordan's room. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Kennedy. Eddie ain't here. He went back to the office to clean out his desk. Oh. Is he still sore at you about losing his job, Maisie? Oh, he sure is, Mrs. Kennedy. On the way back from lunch, he took the only empty seat in the bus and let me stand right in front of him. Oh, I'm sorry, Maisie. I guess an old schmo like myself shouldn't have tried to give you advice on how to hold a man. No, it was all my fault, honey. I was the one that admired Eddie right out of a job. Well, he couldn't be too mad at you, Maisie. He did move in here. That shows he still wants to be near you. Yeah, and he did let me carry his bags from his old boarding house. That shows he likes me a little yet, doesn't it? Uh, yes, yeah. I, yeah, I guess so. And uh, he's bound to appreciate your unpacking his things for him while he's away. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie sure had a lot of stuff, but I put it all away in the dresser drawers, and real neatly, too. Well, you look all pooped out after all that unpacking and stuff. Suppose you let me fix your cup of tea in my room. Oh, gee, thanks. I'll be swell. Oh, good evening, Maisie. Oh, Mrs. Kennedy. Hello, Hello Merton. Merton. I... How'd it go at the drugstore today? Oh, not so good, Maisie. Gosh, I, I, w I was so excited about our date for Saturday night, I, I missed on five ice cream sodas. Five, Merton? Yeah. I threw the balls of ice cream up a little too high. Oh. Did the boss notice it, Merton? No, no, no. Thank goodness Mr. Peabody almost never looks up at the ceiling. Uh, Merton. Huh? Uh, about that date Saturday night, I, um... Yeah? Uh, uh, uh the... Merton, we have a new boarder. A man. Oh, gee, that's swell. Uh, he's Maisie's fiancé. Yeah, swell. Well, of course, we had a fight. Oh, swell. I, well, I, I mean, too bad. But I'm sure they'll make up. It's only a small fight. Oh, too bad. Well, Maisie, do you think you'll make up by Saturday night? Well, I don't know, Merck. Eddie's very obstinate. Uh, 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 oh, gee, he is? I like obstinate men. Well, I, I gotta wash up for dinner. See you, huh? What about you, Maisie? You having dinner alone? I don't know, Mrs. Kennedy. I'll have to wait till Eddie gets back in the office. But I have my doubts. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'm sure you'll forget what you did to him by tonight. Eddie forget? Mrs. Kennedy, you don't know Eddie. One of his parents must have been an elephant. Jordan, uh, I'll have my desk cleared out in a minute, Mr. Evans. You can stop clearing out your desk, Jordan. You mean you changed your mind about firing me? I never changed my mind, Jordan. There's a woman in the outer office to see you. A woman? If it's the same one I had lunch with, tell her no. No. I'll tell her. i got to get some fun out of life. Now, look here, you blonde... Hello, uh... Eddie. Marcia. Marsha Brent, where did you come from? Well, my mother told me the stork brought me, but I've always had a sneaking suspicion. I mean, gosh, after all these years. Sit down, Marsha. Gosh, you look beautiful. Even more beautiful than that uh, blonde you were expecting? Oh, I thought you were Maisie. Maisie? Yeah. You mean you've caught up with her at last? Yeah, and I ain't so glad about it. She interferes with my business, gets in my hair, drives me nuts. Oh, then I don't stand a chance. You still love her. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, then, I guess you'll be happy to hear about your new job. New job? Well, I stopped off here for two reasons. My uh, scouts finally located you, and I thought, well, maybe Maisie was out of your system by now. Uh-uh. Science hasn't found a cure for girls like Maisie. Uh, but you said uh, job, didn't you? Yes, little Marcia isn't one to let her heart rule her mind. Eddie, I'm United Engineering Company now. Oh, yeah, I, I heard about your father. Yeah, I'm awfully sorry, honey. Please, Mr. Jordan, engineers don't go around calling their employers honey. Employers? E engineers? Got a new project, Mr. Jordan. A big electrical plant in Niagara Falls. Interesting? Niagara Falls? For a fleeting moment, I thought we might kill two birds with one stone, but, um... Interested, Eddie? In the job, I mean. Am I? Fine. I'm leaving for Niagara Falls on the 812 tonight. Think you can make the same train? Oh, that's a little faster. But, but sure. Good. I'll have the tickets and meet you at the station. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Wait till I tell Maisie. Eddie. 
Are you home? I sure am, Maisie. Come in. I want to tell you something. Well, I can hear you all right out here. Ah, oh, don't be silly. Come on in. All right. I'll leave the door open. Well, what for? Well, they can hear me better when I yell for help. Well, I'm not sorry at you, Maisie. Even if you did unpack my things. Well, I just thought I'd help. You're not sorry? <laughs> no. Eddie Jordan, you just don't care that I lost your job for you. You're completely indifferent. Listen, Maisie, honey, forget about that old job. I, I never liked it anyway. Honey, I I've got great news for you. You feel like hitting me? No, I feel like loving everybody. Honey, I just got a new job. You did? Just the kind I always wanted, too. Oh. N now I can get my whole life straightened out. After a couple of weeks at Niagara Falls, I'll be able to tackle anything. Oh, of course you will. I... Niagara Falls? Did you say Niagara Falls? I sure did, baby. Oh, Maisie, just think of it. Niagara uh, Falls next stop. I can hardly believe uh, it. Well, how do you think I feel? And do you know what I'm going to do there? Oh, don't tell me, Ed. It'll be so much more fun finding out for myself. Look, look, honey, I'll, I'll tell you more later. Right now, I've got to run out and get a few extra things I'll need. I, I better hurry. We're leaving on the 8-12 tonight. Oh, Eddie, honey, I can't wait to tell Mrs. Kennedy. Well, she knows already. I told her as soon as I came home. Uh, you told her before me? Well... Pretty sure I'd say yes, weren't you? You? Oh, Maisie, don't you understand? I'm, I'm just doing this to make you happy. Well, okay. But I'm not so sure this is going to work out. You and me are both in love with you. Well, uh, i got to hurry. See you later. Come in. Hi. Maisie, I, I was just wondering what kind of a corsage you'd like for Saturday. You, you going someplace? Yeah, maybe? I'm packing. Merton, Eddie and me are leaving for Niagara Falls tonight to be married. To be? Oh. Oh, then I guess it's it's off for Saturday night, huh? I'm sorry, Maisie. Oh, that's all right, maybe. Lots of luck. I, I didn't like dancing anyway. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Uh, say, Maisie, Eddie just told me all about... Uh, you're packing. Well, naturally, Mrs. Kennedy. i got to have something to wear at Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? Yeah, it gets pretty cold up there, you know. Didn't Ed tell you? Well, yes, but he didn't tell me you were going along. Oh, well, I guess he's just fast. Well, he's never been married before, you know. Uh, well, he told me he's going with his new boss. Oh, that's silly. Even if Ed loved his new boss, he wouldn't take a man along on his honeymoon. It wouldn't be the same somehow. I've got a surprise for you, Maisie, you poor girl. Poor girl? Yes. Eddie said he's going with a... a... Marsha Brent. Oh, well, I wonder if I should pack any extra... Uh, Marsha Brent? He said she's a friend from Scottsville. Oh, but I never thought... Well, she's not the type for Eddie's wife. Eddie said her father died and left her everything. And he can't be happy with just money, either. Oh, Mrs. Kennedy, what'll I do? Well, I don't know what, honey, but whatever it is, you better work fast. Remember, his train leaves at 8.12. Yeah, there isn't much time. Mrs. Kennedy, hmm? this is an emergency. Come on. We're going to Eddie's room and help him pack. Well, why should we help him? Well, because if we don't, he's almost sure to catch his train. <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy and I thought you could use some help, Eddie, so here we are. Oh, well, that's right, Eddie. Anything we can do? Gosh, that's well of you both, but I'm just about ready. Well, anyway, I'm glad you came. I'd hate to leave without saying goodbye. Oh, you're going to kiss me farewell, aren't you, Eddie? Maisie, not now. I've only got about 35 minutes yet, and there's a couple of important things I haven't done yet to see you now. Oh, like what? Well, I've got to check over my things before I close the police. I, you know, I might have forgotten something. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Uh, let me see now. I've got my pajamas, shirts... Are you sure you packed your pajamas, Ed? Yeah. Neckties, huh? underwear, socks. You'll catch cold without pajamas. No, I packed them. Toilet articles, shoes. Well, suppose the train is wrecked at night and you aren't wearing pajamas. Well, I tell you that... You'll I... be ashamed to let them rescue you. I packed my pajamas, Maisie. They're at the bottom of the valise. Are you sure? Not only sure, I'm positive. I'm absolutely certain. I am... I am... You what? I'm wondering if I did pack them after all. Oh, Ed, you gotta be sure... Come on, Mrs. K. Turn the valise over. Oh, with pleasure. Maisie, well, wait a minute. Oh, gee, you didn't have to dump all the things out on the floor. Oh, Ed, you did pack them. <laughs> what a relief. What a mess, everything. Oh, sit down, Eddie. Mrs. K and I'll do it for you. Oh, dear. Look how you've creased your things. 
Mrs. K, mm-hmm. help me smooth out these handkerchiefs. Yes. Oh, gosh, there's about 30 of them. Is that all? You'd better go over each one twice. Maisie, do you want me to miss the train? Oh, stop it's... worrying. I called up five minutes ago, and the man told me your train is half an hour late. Yeah, well, I called up five minutes ago, and the man I spoke to said it was right on time. Oh. Well, you must have talked to the engineer. He's at the front of the train. <laughs> Look, haven't you got that valise packed yet? Yeah, I've just finished. We got it packed all right, but you'll have to help close it, Ed. Closed easy enough before. <coughs> what in the world did you put in here? Oh, you're just weak, Eddie. There's even more room now than before. There is. Well, there should be. I threw out that large tube of toothpaste. What'd you do that for? I need toothpaste. Well, you don't need the two. I squeezed all the paste out of it first. Holy smoke. Now it'll be all over everything. Oh, no, it won't. She squeezed it into your pajama pocket. Oh, fine. I'm sure glad I didn't forget to pack my pajamas. Yeah, isn't it lucky? And you'll be wearing them when you clean your teeth. Maisie, you think of everything. <clears throat> oh, you got it closed. Finally. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, what time is it? Gosh, I don't want to be late. Well, it's... It, uh... Mrs. Kennedy. Huh? Oh, yeah. I don't know, Eddie. My watch stopped. Uh, Maisie, look at my wristwatch. Will you? It's on the dresser. Uh, well, it isn't there now. It isn't. Gee, I've got to find it. I put it right there. Oh, Eddie, I just remembered. I packed your watch in the valise. Oh, swell. Well, what's the matter, Ed? I can't even lift this valise. It weighs a ton. I guess you got too much stuff in there, Eddie. Oh, gosh, it's only shirts and things. Isn't it a good thing I threw out the toothpaste, too? Doggone it. I'll have to open the valise again. No wonder I couldn't lift it. Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. Maisie, why did you put this dictionary in here? Well, Eddie, you shouldn't have left it behind. You might want to read something on the train. Oh, what's the use? Now I'll have to run for it. Gee, I wish I knew what time it is. Maisie, are you coming? Yes, Ed. But it's so sad leaving your old home. Maybe forever. Maisie. Don't you want to see the bathroom just once more? He doesn't have to, Maisie. It's 8.15. What time did you say it was? Oh, but she, she said she ate 15 minutes ago. Oh, won't I ever get out of here? Mr. Jordan? Uh, yes? Congratulations, and also there was a call for you from a Miss Brent. I took it. Uh, what did she say, Sonny? Y- yeah, what, Merton? I am not a Sonny, pal. I'm almost 19, and she said to tell Mr. Jordan that she's taken the train to Niagara Falls herself. Stubborn, isn't she? Yes, very. <laughs> she went by herself. Oh, no, no! Yes, yes. She said if you miss the train, you might as well miss the job, too, Sonny. Job? Maisie Revere. I was going up there for a job. Money, dollars, future, something I've dreamed about all my life. Oh, but, Ed, I thought that... Well, um, I tried to detain you, so... You... So you... All this... You wanted me to miss that train, didn't you? Out! Out, all of you! I'm gonna blow my brains out. Oh, what's the use? With my luck, I'd probably miss anyway. Don't worry, Maisie. You'll get over it someday. You should live so long, Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Maisie. Is there anything I can do? Yeah. Ask me about that date for Saturday night. I got a sneaking suspicion I'll be free to make it. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, I sure did at that time. But wouldn't you just know everything would get loused up? After more than two years, Eddie comes back into my life and then this. And now, as far as Eddie's concerned, I'm just a person to be forgotten. Like Whistler's father, John's first wife. Oh, well, maybe you'll get over it. Might as well trudge back upstairs to my room and have a good cry. If I have any strength left in my feet, after making that climb, maybe I'll just bend down and kick myself. You 
have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Malaya, starring Spencer Tracy, James Stewart, Valentina Cortesa, Sidney Greenstreet, and John Hodiak. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, B. Benaderet, Pat McGeehan, Joan Banks, and Joe Forte. Jack McCoy speaking. Now, you seem to me to be a connoisseur of the best of radio drama. In which case, make sure you're subscribed to the Monday Matinee Feed. There we have our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic and live radio drama. So, yeah, either the main Mutual Audio Network feed for all types and genres of audio drama or the Monday Matinee. And we'll see you there. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.